Welcome to today's Ask an Expert webinar. I'm Karen Thompson. I'm the Executive Director at Ask Resource Center, and I am here with my colleagues, Kelly Carnahan. She is our new Training and Communications Coordinator. Casey Vermillion. Wave, Casey. There you go. <laughs> Casey is our Family Support Specialist in charge of our mentor network. Pam Wolber is our brand new um, post-secondary transition coordinator for the state. Alicia Carwall is our Family Support Services Supervisor. And I think you can also see, I don't know if you can see, Susie Lund. And she is in the background doing production for today, but Susie is our other training coordinator. That position is split into two. And like I said, my name is Karen Thompson. Um, we are gonna get going on the slide deck today where we will talk about how Ask Resource Center supports families and children with disabilities across the state of Iowa. So we're gonna get right into things. We're talking about what is new at ASK today, and today you're going to spend a little bit of time learning a little bit about the history and the development of ASK Resource Center, and you're also going to learn about the four main services, products and supports, if you will, that are available at ASK. They've actually been available for a long time, but they are part of the new contract that we have taken on with the department as well. All right, so the first thing I, I can see that there's a chat, so really quickly, I'm just gonna check on that. Oh, no, it's okay. All right, the first thing that I want to share with you are the values of Ask Resource Center. And that's what you're looking at here. Passion and fearlessness, individualized attention, integrity, excellence in stewardship, unyielding commitment, and collective impact. ASK is a family-focused uh, nonprofit organization, and I'm going to talk a little bit on the next slide about exactly what that means. But you'll hear me say we're run and led by families. We're here to empower people with disabilities and their family members and the professionals who support them. And we do that through various different types of supports. Um, we do that utilizing our values and operating according to them every day. Our very first value is passion and fearlessness. These values were written by our board of directors who are made up predominantly of family members of children with disabilities. And under passion and fearlessness, the first statement inside our values is that we are not afraid. We embrace our values and convictions and we live them with grace. And essentially that is the way that ASK operates. We are here to provide information, supports and services to families so that they are not afraid and they can live their values and their convictions in regard to their children with grace, working alongside the professionals who support them in concert and collaboration most of the time. But when a conflict arises or a different of, difference of opinion happens, we have the opportunity and the ability because of the information that we are familiar with to be able to navigate that conflict or that difference of opinion and come to the best agreement on the other side for the sake of the child that we're supporting. And if we can't, then we know and we are able to utilize the higher level procedural safeguards that are in place um, for us all to come to a decision as quickly as possible. That's the basis by which ASK operates. So let's move to the next slide. So a little bit about the history of ASK. We were started by a couple of parents who ran into each other with their children present. Their children's both had complex medical needs. And so they were able to identify with each other as having a similar life experience in that way. And in having that life experience with each other, they struck up a conversation and they found that even though one of them had a background in political organizing, one of them had a background in social work, it was difficult for them to navigate all of the systems and supports that were necessary to help their children. And so they decided to start a support group 
realizing that probably for other children and families, it was also difficult, especially if you didn't know what they know and be able to speak the way that they were able to speak and network with the professionals who supported their families. Well, this was back in the early 1990s, so there weren't cell phones and there wasn't social media, and so starting a support group meant meeting in person. And quickly that grew. They were in the Des Moines metropolitan area. They reached out to Mercy Hospital Medical Center and asked for some space. It continued to grow. It became a resource center, and it continued to spread and grow across the state. In 1997, the organization became an official nonprofit, and in 1998 was when it first took on its Parent Training and Information Center grant, or the PTI, PTIC grant. The Parent Training and Information Center grant is a grant with the Federal Department of Education. It does not pass through the state. It goes directly with the feds, so we Submit the grant to the federal government. We have a federal project officer. Um, you may hear, if you are familiar with the education world, you might hear a lot of conversation about Part C of IDEA and Part B of IDEA. There are also some other parts of the IDEA, and one of those is Part D. And the parent centers, the parent training and information centers, and another type of parent center called a CPRC, exist within Part D of IDEA. We must rest outside of the education system, but be collaborative with the education system. Being collaborative doesn't mean we always agree, but it does mean that we work through differences and we work to resolve conflicts so that parents and professionals can work together. So, Ask Resource Center has been Iowa's Parent Training and Information Center doing the same work that we're doing now since 1997. We are just now under a new contract to do a great deal more of it. Parent Training and Information Centers across the state um, or across the country um, are seed grants. They're very small amounts of money. So many PTIs also have contracts with various state departments to do other types of family support work on a larger scale. And that's the case for us now. As a parent training and information center, you have to be run and led by families. And what that means is our board members and our staff members have to be majority people with disabilities or family members and caregivers are pe with pe of people with disabilities. Um, that means you have to be 51% or more run and led by families. In Iowa, I'm proud to say our board is usually hovering right around 80% um, families, and our staff team is 100% run and led by families. Last year, with just the PTI grant and uh, Family to Family Health Information Center grant, which is very much like a PTI, but in the healthcare world, we were able to provide 38,000 instances of family support. By family support in this particular identifier, what I mean is one-to-one -one family support, group family support, and all of our types of training. We did not include any of our web or social media reaches and uh, numbers in this overall number because those are so universal and not always super meaningful in terms of providing family support. So this is just those more direct and group supports where we know we are reaching specific families that we can count. And so if we're able to do that level of service and support with just a PTI and F2F, Hopefully we can do a great deal more of the same type of work once we spread our services and supports across the state using the new contract that we have with the Iowa Department of uh, Public Education. Let's go to the next slide. So we serve the whole child and you're gonna learn more about what our different types of supports and services are and how we provide them. But one of the questions that we've gotten a lot is, are we able to help with Medicaid? Are we able to help with diagnoses? Some things like that, given this new contract that we've taken on. Yes, we always have, and we will continue to do so. Um, all of our staff are cross-trained across the different types of funding streams that we have and the different supports and services that families need. We can help with education, 
healthcare, disability law in the sense of understanding what the laws are and when and how you might need to tap into a legal resource. We are not attorneys, and so we will not provide you with attorney services or legal services. We provide information and resources, advocacy and support, and we have um, access to translation services. So those are available to you if you need them as you're utilizing our services and supports. So in terms of this slide, what you're looking at is two different pieces of information. In the first box with the bold, you'll see individual assistance, training, mentoring, and post-secondary transition. Those are our large buckets of support that we have offered through ASK, through the Parent Training and Information Center, Family to Family Health Information Center, and other smaller grants um, for a long time. And those are the types of services and supports that are now being provided in a much more vast and comprehensive way across the state, utilizing the contract with the Iowa Department of Education. My colleagues are gonna talk about each of those in depth going forward. But before we move on to that, I wanted to make sure that I touched base with you about some of the products and services that are most important to families and that they seek out a great deal. One of those is general different types of information and dissemination. One of them is the webinar that we're on today, our e-news and the ways that you can access our um, informational sheets using our website. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more going forward. We also have a Together We Can statewide conference put on about families, by families, once a year. It's held in the Des Moines area at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. It's called the Together We Can conference, the TWC, as people know it. And it is always the first Saturday in May. And then we're also gonna share about the Ask Each Other online support group today. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Alicia Carwall, and she's going to take it from here. All right. Hello, everyone. As Karen mentioned earlier, my name is Alicia, and I'm the Family Support Supervisor here at ASK. Um, very excited as we expand our work across the state, even more so than we have been able to in the past. So I want to talk a little bit about what individual assistance looks like at ASK. On the screen, you can see some of the questions that we might receive from families, um, but I do want to highlight that we provide individual assistance not only to family members, but to individuals with disabilities themselves, and also um, we provide individual assistance to professionals who serve individuals with disabilities in some capacity. And so a little bit about what that individual assistance might look like is coming up on the next slide. But before we get to that, I just want to offer that anybody can complete um, what we call as a contact request. Um, and the easiest way to do that uh, it would be to go to our website. We have a contact us tab. And if you click on that, it's going to ask you a series of question to um, further get at what sort of support you're looking for. So that is how you could uh, request individual assistance. Sometimes it might be a family member completing that form. Sometimes it might be a prof professional completing that form on behalf of a family member, um, or it might be a professional looking for some technical assistance. And so they're completing that form for themselves. And so the other way to do that, if you're not comfortable going to our website would be to to call our main office, but that is going to require that you leave some of that same information on a voice message. And so it's really probably easiest just to go ahead and complete that form um, online. Um, once that form is completed, it kind of goes through our internal um, our internal processes, if you will, and we respond to those contact requests in the order in which we receive them. And that's important for everyone to understand because while we're spreading um, our staff even further across the state than we have previously, although we did have people positioned across the state prior to this contract, it is, um, we want families to understand and professionals to understand that you may receive a, a call from a family support specialist after you've completed a contact request. And maybe you're from Northwest Iowa, but you might be receiving a call from somebody who works elsewhere in the state. And that's OK. The reason we have it structured that way is so that as those intakes come in, as those contact requests um, forms are completed, we are able to respond in a first come, first serve basis. So responding to those um, as they come in. 
And so we don't have people waiting for a long period of time to receive um, a response back. So on this slide, we kind of highlight what um, what those individual assistance supports might look like. Um, Karen mentioned that we do a lot of information dissemination. Um, that could be around special education. It might be related to health care, special health care that many of our um, children and adults with disabilities um, need to access. We might share resources. So maybe that information is first shared through that phone call where we're talking with a family or professional. And then we're gonna follow up with resources around that same information. And that might look like um, information sheets that Ask Staff has created to help families better understand different things related to you know, um, the IEP process or evaluation process um, or how to apply for a waiver. Um, that might also be information that we're sharing out from other organizations that we uh, feel is, is a very um, strong and valid resource. Another way we share resources is through our Ask an Expert webinars. Um, you're currently attending one of those right now. Our next series starts on November 18th, and it's around um, IEP 101. And so really just looking um, holistically at the IEP process and hoping that we're able to help families better understand um, everything about IEPs. And so if you ever want to attend the Ask an Expert or receive the recording of an Ask an Expert webinar, you would go to our website and under events, you would register there. I have colleagues that are going to dive deeper into some of this next week as well, but I did want to mention that. Um, we also will sometimes share out those um, Ask an Expert webinars as part of our resources. If they relate, for example, to the topic we've talked with the family about, perhaps they're wanting to know more about four plus services uh, as a part of secondary transition. So we might share um, previously recorded webinars that are meaningful to whatever that family or professional called about. Advocacy can look a lot of different ways. We might be helping a family review documents such as IEPs or IFSPs and helping them understand those components within those documents. We might be helping families understand what's in their child's behavior intervention plan. Uh, we might be supporting a family through preparing for a meeting um, that they have upcoming. That might be an IEP meeting, that might be a manifestation determination review and helping them understand what to expect, what sorts of things might be discussed. Um, we then uh, would also help debrief with a family. Occasionally, we are also attending meetings alongside a family. That might be a virtual attendance from the family support specialist, or it might be in person. Again, each of those um, circumstances uh, are dependent upon what that family is needing um, for the level of support that they're needing and requesting. Um, and so I think if we advance to the next slide, um, we did want to, I wanted to, to share and uh, make sure everybody feels reassured that your information that is shared with ASK is confidential. So um, we do have a database in which we do log notes, but um, while some data might be shared with the Iowa Department of Education, all of your information is kept confidential. So when we're sharing out information, it is stripped of any personal information. And so we're sharing it more as a collective. So for example, we might share out if we are seeing trends, um, we might share out, you know, in the last quarter, we had this number of uh, individuals requesting support around um, waiver services, or we had this many people requesting um, information and support around secondary transition. So we are collecting a lot of data, but when we are sharing that out with the Iowa Department of Education, please be assured that your specific information is kept confidential. Um, I do want to mention, of course, if any, if we would receive a subpoena for any information, um, we would you know, be required to share any of that information per court of law. Um, but other than that, it is not shared out um, to the department in any way that um, would impede upon your personal circumstances or, or we would absolutely maintain that confidentiality. All right, and I have another colleague who's gonna start talking about training now. I'm Kelly Carnahan. I am one of our training coordinators for ASK. I'm also our communications coordinator. Um, but Susie Lund is also a training coordinator with us. We share this role. Um, but ASK is, uh, at ASK, we have training opportunities for both parents and professionals. ASK is happy to provide training for small and large group settings. Um, we provide training about ASK, about our programs, 
or we can tailor a training to your needs. For example, we could do a training over Medicaid information, IEPs, post-secondary services, or anything that you have specific questions over. These trainings can be done in person where we can come to you, or it can be done virtually, as can provide all, or can also provide respect training. Um, this program is on pause through the Department of Ed currently, um, but we are hoping to bring that back next year once we are done expanding and training all of our new staff. We are also eager to represent ASK services around the state. ASK is happy to attend events at your, that your organization is hosting to get the word out about the services we provide. Uh, we come to events like resource fairs, community events, carnivals, etc. We can provide flyers and talk to families and professionals directly about how we can serve them. Um, as you know, as you are attending, we also provide live webinars throughout the year. Um, our webinars touch base on a variety of topics, such as understanding your child's IEP, conflict resolution strategies, Medicaid updates, challenging behavior, and a lot more other topics. We love to hear from families and professionals about webinar ideas, and we often do uh, topics over commonly uh, heard concerns that we are hearing from families. If you cannot attend our webinar, our webinar live, we also post them on our YouTube channel uh, for you to watch at your own convenience. All of our previous webinars, if you are new to us, are already posted on our YouTube. You can find us at youtube.com slash askresource. If you are a visual or auditory learner, this could be a great way to access information. We have videos covering a lot of topics for all ages of uh, disabilities, no matter where you are at in your journey. Our YouTube also has shorts, which are quick videos condensed to give you the information in under five minutes. These are helpful for quick questions and understanding the basic topics of everything. And next we will go into, uh, we'll have Casey talk about our mentoring program for families. Almost forgot to unmute myself too. Um, so as Kelly said, uh, my name is Casey and I oversee the Ask Each Other Mentor Network. Um, the Ask Each Other Mentor Network is made up of a group of caregivers across Iowa that um, are ready to use the knowledge and experiences that they've gained um, from their years of caregiving to now help other families with children with disabilities. So these mentors have been screened and trained by us um, so that we can help ensure that they, um, that the matches that we make will be quality matches and that they'll be a good support to you and your family. Um, part of my role then is to make sure that if you request a mentor, the best match possible is made. So you would help me determine that. Um, we would talk together and decide if you wanted the match to be made um, based on diagnosis. So maybe you're a family who has a child with um um, with autism and you're wanting another family with a child with autism, we can do that. Or if you'd rather be based on something more like life circumstances. So maybe you have a child who is getting ready to enter that transition from high school to adulthood, and you're wishing you had another family that had navigated that to ask questions to and spend time with and learn from. Um, so um, we can do either way. Um, after we figure that out together, I then reach out to our group of trained caregivers or across Iowa um, to see if someone is available. If I'm unable to find someone, we do have a partner organization at a national level called Parent to Parent USA. Um, this gives me the option to um, look for mentors all across the nation that have lived experience raising a child with a disability so that that way we can really truly find you the best connection possible. Um, sometimes that's especially valuable maybe with a rare diagnosis situation or um, just to have a wider pool of people to draw from. So when you've been connected with that mentor, you would expect to interact with them four times over about a two month period. This could be done through Zoom, over the phone, you could text back and forth, or um, if you lived close enough and you wanted to, you could even get together in person, just really whatever the two of you decided was best. Um, as you connected, I would be available if anything came up. Maybe um, you're feeling like this wasn't really a good fit and you're wanting somebody else, or maybe um, you're having a hard time finding a time to coordinate to get together. Um, I can help with those things so that um, I take that challenge off your plate and you can really just focus on um, getting the best um, from or the support that you're needing. Um, after the match is over, 
Um, sometimes people do decide that they want another match. Maybe that person was great, but they didn't have a certain area of expertise that they were hoping that they could have. Um, and so they want a different mentor or, um, Maybe they um, just want to keep growing their village of support and get to know more parents. And so you can always ask for another mentor when you're done. Um, before we head to the next slide, I did want to quickly touch on another thing that our amazing um, mentors do is they do lead that virtual support group that Karen touched on earlier. So the first um, the first Monday of the month at noon, we do have the Ask Each Other virtual support group. And... Um, we try to aim to have two of our mentors there, and that's just a place where parents can get together and um, you can have time to brainstorm with each other, uh, maybe just get to know families from across the street, across the state, sorry about that, um, encourage each other and um, maybe even just um, celebrate some wins that are happening in your life. So you can head to the events tab on our website for more information about that. Okay, so then... Um, the second, the second slide here we made because we get a lot of questions regarding the difference between a family support specialist and a mentor. And so we wanted to kind of create a graphic to help with that. So um, I know that you've heard a little bit from Alicia already, but I wanted to kind of clarify on that. So um, as you can see, there is some overlap. Um, a family support specialist, so like if, um, if you request a family support specialist, um, both they and a mentor would listen to you empathetically. Both would help you um, find information, help you determine what your priorities are, think of solutions. Um, but there's also some differences that might be helpful for you to understand um, as you're making your decision. So a family support specialist is a person who um, has experience with a disability, um, but they may may or may not have actually raised a child with a disability personally. Um, our mentors have all raised a child with a disability. A family support specialist is a staff member that's been trained in all areas of special education, civil rights law, special health care, Medicaid, um, whereas a mentor is a volunteer who's been trained in research-based research -based strategies to best support a family and help them process what they're experiencing, but they're truly drawing from whatever they have experienced in their personal journey. A family support specialist might help you by collaborating with the schools or the AEA if needed. They might help you prep for IEP meetings, review documents with you, or even help in a dispute resolution at a higher level. Whereas a mentor, on the other hand, um, because they're just drawing from those experiences, if something comes up what they're not familiar with, they would more think um, maybe teach you ways that they've learned to research when they have a hard situation that's come up over the years, or maybe help you brainstorm ideas, or they would lead you through um, creating a contact request to reach out to a family support specialist. So some families choose to access both a family support specialist and a mentor at the same time. Some um, reach out to one at one point and one at the other. It truly just depends on where you are and what you're wanting at that time. If you're ever not sure and um, you need help navigating that, you could always um, reach out to us and we can help you make that decision as well. Um, so now I'm going to hand this over to Pam so she can tell you about her area. All right, thank you, Casey. So I'm Pam Wilbur, and I am the post-secondary transition coordinator um, for ASK. And so um, I'm going to be digging into um, transition. It is an area of uh, passion for me. Um, iOS requires that the transition planning starts at the age of 14. Um, the IEP does a really good job um, kind of setting up and, and helping with that planning. Unfortunately, I think a lot of times schools feel like that's sort of the te the teacher's responsibility or the teacher's thing, maybe not understanding kind of that process. And so I have a real passion to help families understand um, the different components of the transition IEP and how that is a really wonderful guide um, in that planning process. So we know that when families and students plan for this transition and when they have a good support system um, in place and that when the individual and their support system have high expectations that that transition can go better 
and um, we have more success. And so I, I look forward to kind of working with families going forward to help them plan all in the areas of living, learning, um, working. And then we like to put playing out there too. I think sometimes we forget um, that leisure activities and even some of the barriers around leisure activities really do get in the way of, of people living their best life. So um, some of the information, um, my colleague Marley, Mari worked on this and it's a fabulous webinar or website that really provides a lot of information, resources, um, which can help lead to support and advocacy um, from the transition web, transitioniowa.org. Next slide. And when you go there, you're gonna find this, um, this visual. I love this visual. Um, it, it starts in elementary um, because the transition to adulthood does start there. And there's different points along the way. And then there's checklists that kind of can coincide with um, each of these different areas of what um, some things to expect and some things to prepare for. Um, there, I'm hoping, because um, there like is a need to go past graduation because transition doesn't um, stop at graduation. Sometimes it can even just be the beginning. Um, and so kind of transitioning or going that next step and finding a visual for that. So thank you. After this webinar, you will receive a survey. Um, the survey, if you complete it, is very, very helpful to us. We would love if you completed it. This is a great opportunity for you to put what specific questions or concerns or topics that you would like to talk uh, or like us to talk about more. Um, we love to take input from families and be able to address your questions. So this is how we start planning for our webinars for a year or for the year we take your suggestions and see how many of those have come through. And we want to address what is being talked about in Iowa. And just our last little bit, this is our contact information. Um, we do have a central office in the uh, metro area in Johnston, Iowa. However, we are a staff that is out and about in the state. So there is oftentimes we do not have staff members in the office. Um, a lot of our staff members work from home um, as we are spread across the state. So arriving at the building will not receive you services quicker. Um, our fastest or the, the quickest way to get services is going to be through our website. And we have sent you the link for that information already. But again, next week, you, we will dive deeper, more, dive deeper into the information to make sure we address all of your questions. Um, you can also contact us by our phone by our phone numbers provided and the email. You can also follow us on Facebook uh, to keep it up to date with all of our events and uh, webinars being posted. Just please know that Facebook Messenger is not a great way to get contact from us as well. So please, uh, for confidentiality reasons, we do not respond to messages there. Please contact us um, via our emails, phone numbers, or website.